Recognize the member for Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Uh, this government says it's in support of high technology jobs, but if so, their actions in relation to post secondary education are both tragic and foolish as they cut higher education funding by $40 million over the next three years. It's tragic and foolish because immediately it will cost thousands of good jobs, many directly in support of technology research and development at a time of relatively high unemployment in this province, and it will decrease economic activity in this province by as much as $400 million. In addition to hurting our technology research and development capacity, these cuts won't save the taxpayers any money because these cuts will hurt the economy and people will be making less. Tax revenues will actually drop by more than the $40 million the government is pretending to save. Any cuts in government spending impact the economy because of something economists call the multiplier effect. If the government fires 1,000 workers, the laid-off workers spend less money in local businesses, so these local businesses lay off some more workers, and those workers spend less money, and the effect multiplies many times. That's why smart governments look at things like stimulus spending to hire more employees during a recession to stimulate the economy moving. This kind of multiplier is roughly the same no matter what the workers are doing, planting flowers, building a skating rink, running a bucket brigade. But why would you invest stimulus money in a pointless exercise like that? Because if they're building new transit lines, for example, which enhances local business activity along the transit routes or repairing salmon spawning grounds, you get a different kind of multiplier called a dynamic multiplier. Universities have huge dynamic multipliers thanks to the opportunities and technology. A study of UBC showed a 10 times multiplier for government money invested in that school. $40 million in cuts to post-secondary education in BC will destroy as much as 10 times that amount of activity in our economy. 10 times. Why is the multiplier effect in universities and colleges in BC so large? The new jobs of the 21st century, the good new technology jobs that are opening up, are not like yesterday's jobs, which can easily be automated or moved offshore. The new tech jobs in clean energy, medical and pharmaceutical research, film and video production, software design, biotechnology, communications, online marketing, biomedical engineering, internet design, web design, even working in a bank. More and more, these jobs require a university or a college degree, and increasingly, you're going to need a graduate degree. As a result, university and college graduates make much higher wages over the course of their lifetime, and it's easier for them to find work. So when we educate ourselves and our children, making them more capable to take on these jobs of the present and future, total wages and total employment levels go up. That's one of the reasons universities and colleges have huge dynamic multipliers. But there's so much more. Because new work in the 21st century is so knowledge-based, a healthy population of well-educated graduates attracts technology-related investment. New businesses move here and open their doors. And this new technology investment doesn't just come from outside the province. New BC graduates start their own tech businesses and hire, local, hire locally. This spillover effect keeps multiplying our initial government investment year after year. R&D at our universities and colleges produces yet another multiplier effect. Think of the internet. Does this government think it was invented by Microsoft or Google? It was invented and designed almost entirely with government investment. And about half of that research was done at publicly funded universities in the US and Canada. Think of the size of the internet in terms of our economy. Think of the size of the multipliers. But we don't need to think abstractly, Honorable Speaker. In my constituency, we have a high-tech job creating machine in the University of British Columbia, a school that is grappling with yet another round of cuts under this government, as well as a core review and massive hikes in electrical rates that limit their ability to offer student programming and do research. In 2010-11, UBC attracted more than half a billion dollars in research funding for over 8,000 separate projects. The school has created more than 150 spin-off companies from their research located in BC, which themselves have raised more than $2 billion in capital. 100 of these technology firms are in areas directly related to health, creating 2,500 jobs in our own biotech cluster on the Broadway corridor, the seventh largest such cluster in North America, and growing rapidly. Investments in universities are multiplied many times over by new industries. And these new technology industries are the emerging sources of new jobs in the new economy. The government's cuts have already led to the abandoning of a planned engineering school at UNBC and a high-tech animation program at Capilano University. This government says it's in favor of high-tech jobs, but it clearly is not. If it were, it would not be cutting funding to BC's universities and colleges, the very places that generate the high-technology jobs and employees of the future. 
This government's words, yet again, do not meet their actions, Honourable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you.